In this video, we are going to set up a new project to create our simple save system and later we are going to import to it our starter project and try to implement this save system into our starter project. The most important part is that we want to use the template for the universal renderer pipeline since the starter project uses this pipeline and it will be much easier to import the packages to this project. Give it a name and create the project. Great. Now it will take some time for Unity to prepare your project and since the universal renderer pipeline template comes with a preset scene, let's go to the top menu, let's select file, new scene, and I'm using the Unity 2020.2.1f, so this has some setup for the scene, we are going to select the basic scene since we want to have a camera and the light, let's create it, great, and now what we can do is select file and save as, and let's save it in the scenes folder, okay, save system scene, Okay, great. Now, what we can do is we can select the scene folder and we can delete our sample scene. Let's delete it. Now let's go back to our assets in the project folder. Let's select all the assets and let's exclude using control the settings and the scenes and let's click delete because we do not want that uh, extra stuff in our project. When we are done and everything is deleted beside the things that we will need, now we can start implementing our save system. Let's start by creating a new folder in the assets in the project section, so right click, create, and let's select folder, and let's call it underscore scripts, okay, and in this folder let's double tap on this folder, let's right click here, create, and let's create a new C-sharp script, let's call it save system, okay, let's open it up in Visual Studio, great, now we will not need the start and update, so let's delete those. First of all, we will need to have a couple of public fields. So we're going to create public, string, and we're going to call it save, name. And let's call, uh, let's set it to be equal to uh, quotation marks, save data, underscore, and this will be it. Now what we can do is we can also add a save data index to have a possibility to save multiple save files. So we are going to add public, int, save data index and let's set it to be zero by default and we can add to it a, an attribute so square brackets range and let's set it from zero to ten the whole idea is that we are going to have this save data name and we are going to add to it an index and in this way changing the index will save and load the data from a different save file so this is just for creating the name next we will need to have two methods uh, one for saving uh, the content of a string to a file and one for loading the content of a string from a file. So let's start from uh, saving the content of a string to a file. So let's create a private ball and let's call it write to file. And this save system will save the data to a file, but of course you can extend it to save the data to a server or to player prefs if you need it. Now we are going to pass as the parameters here a string name and we're going to pass string content and we are going to first of all get the path to our file and to do this we are going to type var full path and let's set it to be equal to path alt enter in visual studio will bring you a quick uh, help menu and we can say using system.io which will uh, create using system.io statement at the top of the class and now what we can do is dot uh, call dot combine since we want to combine the persistent data path for unity with the file name that we want to give this file to and uh, first of all we will need to pass here the application which is unity class dot persistent data path that we have talked about earlier so this will give us a persistent data path where we can put our uh, file and for the file name we are going to pass dot name uh, or rather comma name so this path dot combine will combine those to the uh, path to the folder where we can save our data and the name of the file that we want to save now when writing to a file something can go wrong so to protect us from the consequences of it we can create a try catch block 
where it will catch any error or any exception that has occurred and it will inform us about it. So let's type try. Tap tap in Visual Studio to create try catch block. And in the try block, we are going to call file, which is the part of the system.io dot write all text. And we are going to pass here our path. So this will be the full path that we have created, comma, and we are going to pass here the content that we want to save to a file. And if this went OK, we are going to return true. So our write to file will return true, so we can uh, be sure that we have saved our file to our content to a file. Now, if there is an exception, we can see that the sketch has already created a system.exception, or we can call exception. Alt enter on it and say using system, the using system will appear at the top. And now we can call this exception. Let's call it E. And instead of throwing it further, we are going to type debug dot log error and we are going to call error saving uh, to a file. And we can add to it E dot message to get the message from the error. Now, if we didn't succeed in this try statement, we are going to return false. So anybody that is calling this write to file will know that we have failed to write a file. Uh, content to a file. Now, for the loading method, we are going to create private bool again, and we are going to call it uh, read from file. And again, we are going to pass a string name to get the name of a file, and we are going to call out string content. And out keyword will allow us to save the data to our string that was passed as the parameter here without having to return it. So we can safely return bool value and the string that we have passed here will contain the data and the method will save it back to the string. So if we uh, call uh, string my string and we pass it here, the my string will contain the uh, read information from a file. Now let's create content for it. We're going to need to have the full path. So again, we can copy this full path since this can change when we change the index we want to always get it fresh uh, so wherever we read and or uh, write the file next what we will need to do is create another try catch block tap tap to create it from the snippet in visual studio and in the try statement we are going to call content file dot read all text and we are going to read all text from our file path so this should read the text from a file to our content, but of course it can throw, uh, throw an exception. So we are going to return true. If we are successful to read our data from a file. And if we weren't successful, instead of throwing, we are going to call debug dot log error. And we're going to type failed or error when loading uh, the file or the data from a file and we are going to again pass the e dot message uh, we haven't uh, gave we didn't give the name to the exception so let's give it a, a, a name e and we can uh, pass e dot message and since we are passing the string uh, in, with the keyword out we need to write something to this content string so what we can do is we can type content equals empty string and we can again return false at the end of this method if we weren't successful in the try statement. So now to use those two methods, we are going to go to the top of the system, uh, of the save system, and we are going to create two public methods. Public, a void, and let's call it save data. And we are going to pass here a string data to save. Okay. And let's create another method. This time it will be public string load data we are going to create a string here and pass it back and return it so in the save data what we are going to do is check if our uh, write to file and we're going to pass here our save name which is the first parameter the first field plus and we are going to add save data index to read from this specific uh, name and what we are going to do is pass the content which we were given by this method as the argument so the data to save and if it returns true we are going to debug 
dot log and let's log successfully saved the data and else we are going to get the debug.log statement from this exception now we have the save data ready what we will need to do is to just implement the load data and to load the data we are going to create string data equals empty string and we are going to create if statement if uh, i think it was read from file and we are going to call again save name so this is the file name plus the save data index and we didn't need to pass here out data and this is the uh, case with the out keyword so if the uh, read from a file will read the data it will return bool value to inform us that we were successful but the string data will contain the data read from a file and this is why we are using this out keyword so that we can save the data read from this file uh, in the parameter that we pass to this method so in this case this will be the string data now if we are successful again we are going to copy the debug.log statement and we are going to call successfully loaded data just so that we know that we were successful and at the end of this method we are going to return our data great and basically that's it now of course if you want to change the way you write or read data to so for example reading or writing from a server you would encapsulate it as a separate class and you would pass it to this save system for example in form of an interface that has this write and load or read uh, from and uh, this would work as well now we are going to keep this save system simple so this is it in the next video we are going to test it by creating a test uh, setup by creating a couple of cubes for example and we are going to save their positions and load them from a file so see you in the next video